see, what you don't take serious can never take you serious. You can't cheat life. The word of God is the bread of life. Until words are released on you, there is no passage in your life. It's another time again as we feed from our Heavenly Father, as we hear words of impactation. God answers trust more than your prayer life. Ministration. I speak to your flesh. Whatever thing that have given you sleepless night, it is commanded out in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what anybody has said. I, your father, I say you are blessed. Salvation via God's servant, Dr. Maxwell Golden Egbe. For it shall truly be your hour of all round impactation. Now I decree upon you as you act, may changes locate your life. And you clap for Jesus, everybody. How was your night? Nice to see you again in church. Can you give somebody a high five? And say, good to see you this morning. Say, don't distract me at all. I'm before the king of my life. Not a man, but a God. Don't distract me. I want to be blessed this morning. Give the Lord a big hand and take your seat, everybody. One more time, clap better for Jesus, everybody. We began a trade lesson for the youths. So for the next two meetings, we shall treat on the who is a visionary. In his village where everybody is trying to build a temporal, momentary life for themselves. Everybody you meet today, you meet a young child, all they are crying for is comfort. You meet an average lady on the streets of any country. She needs a man who has a car who can give her money to spend. You meet a young man an average young man is looking for the quickest way to make money. You meet a father with children. He just wants money. That's all he wants. You meet a woman with children. All she wants is money. No preparation for the future. No proper home training for the children. No legacy preparation. Just money. Everybody is money. And I have always asked the question, those who have monies did not look for monies. They built a system. Young men now are into more of Yahoo, Bitcoin, Forest, easiest way to make monies. Nobody has a dream that they want to sleep in a garage to see that dream come to pass. Nobody wants to see all through the night to work hard to build a future. The easiest way is the best way now. And that's the reason why Africa remains the poorest because it's the easiest way we are all looking for. And nobody gets the easiest way and succeeds. So who is a visionary? One with a deep responsibility for the future one who sees the future one with a deep responsibility for the future he is fighting for tomorrow not today who is a visionary one who is lost in his assignment you don't need to encourage him you don't need to support him. He's lost in his assignment. He knows what he wants to achieve. He knows he has a life in the future. He knows what he wants to achieve. He knows what he doesn't need. A woman today, no. Some people go to school and have the camp men in their houses. In the campus. That lady has no dream for life. 
He knows what he wants to achieve. A young boy goes to school. He has three girlfriends in the same campus. But the man with the vision is lost in his assignment. You can't encourage him to do what he needs to do best. That is his life. If he doesn't do that, he's a failure. So he knows. Whether he's sick or he's rejected, he's stuck in his assignment. So he knows if he doesn't do this thing, his future is black. Some pastors are doing these things for money. Some are doing it for fame. So that's why they enter, get into occultism to survive. Because if you truly have a vision, you should know the time of seed planting and the time of harvest. If you have a vision, you should know the days of plantation and the days of harvest. You don't plant the seed and eat the seed at the same time. And that's why God gave the man and gave the woman a womb. Because he had to create diversions of functions in the human body. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, from verse 5 to 10, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Fully is set in great dignity. The rich sit in low places. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. He that diggeth a pit shall follow. You can't run away from it. You can't run away from your investment. No. You can't run away from your own self-investment. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. Whosoever breaketh the edge, the serpent will bite. Verse 9. Whosoever removeth stones shall be hurt therewith. And he that cleaveth wood shall endanger thereby. Verse 10. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Go to verse 15 to 18. The labor of the foolish will yet every one of them. Because you know what? Not how to go to the city. May that not be your testimony. Say amen. May that not be your testimony. Amen. It wearied everyone. Because he needs to be encouraged to do God's will for his life. Woe to the land when thy king is a child. Thy princes eat in the morning. That means you are looking for things you don't need from the beginning. You are a young man, young lady. You are everywhere in the city. You are not building a future for yourself. Blessed are thou, O land, when the king is the son of nobles. Thy prince eat in due season. Look at that. Thy prince eat in, not eat in your time. Eat in due season. For strength, not for drunkenness sake. Then look at verse 18. By much lawfulness, the building decayed and through idleness of the hands, the hands drop it through. A wise man once said, time is luck. To me, time is life. Wasted time is a wasted life. One wise man said, time is luck. But I say time is life. A wasted time is a wasted life. A wasted time is a wasted life. Let's 
first look at David, the scripture I just read showed you about people who are supposed to be here. But they are here. Because of what they see about their future. You are supposed to be here. But after many years, you are here. Because you don't see anything about your future. You are 16. You are 25. You are 35. You are 40. You are a youth. All that drives you more is the vehicle somebody is driving. Your drive is a car. Your drive is a house. Your drive is monies. Have you ever seen a man who desires monies that fulfill destiny? No. You know, Messi desires to play football and be the best footballer on the earth. He didn't desire to make monies. And because of playing football, he became the best player of his time. Now he's making monies. Nobody desires to make monies. And lives to see himself eat that money. Because you need to make a living. By a certain medium of professionalism. Then finance will always be a part of your history. Look at the town where we exist today. There are more 419 young men. Than men who want to pursue a dream. They drive a big car. Live in big houses. Spend money lavishly. And then die at the age of 30. At the age of 40, they are gone. You know why? You can't cheat your investment. Write it down. You can't cheat your own investment. You can't rob somebody and pay some other person. You can't cheat your future. You can't cheat your own life. In First Samuel chapter 17, 26, to 56. We saw a story about David sitting down in the midst of people and asking questions. What will happen to the man that kills this man? That was not a free meal. That was a hard question to ask. An enemy of the entire nation, a young boy of 17 was willing to fight and overcome him. Those are the kind of men we need today on the earth. People who are determined to succeed in life. People who can build a nation, a state, a business, a community. Not those who are looking for their stomach's sake, for their belly's sake. No. No. From the root event of David's history and the walk of his life, let's make a deep exchange with today's generation. How many young men today will stand and say, I will kill a Goliath for a nation's sake? Somebody prefers to go into forestry than answering the call for ministry. Somebody prefers to go into Bitcoin. When you don't have intelligence for it. Because somebody told you it's the quickest way to make money. You have a dream to be a lawyer, to be a doctor. Sudden quick intervention takes you out of it. You prefer to be a fashion designer. Where you have a better head to do some other thing. I'm not against those who are doing fashion. That's your trade. Is that God's purpose for your life? So the engagement of your time must be looked into. What do you spend your time with as a youth? So this should be a wake-up call. Whether you are married, you are not up to 70, you are a youth. To everyone here present today, that age is just a number. What we do with time is what enhances age. Write it down. Age is just a number. What you do with time. Generations yet unborn should speak of you when you are gone. Not today. 
My father trained my sibling, my, his brothers. He all going, went to school. Today they are useless. They are not useful to themselves. So it's not going to school or taking care of people that matters. What legacy are you prepared to build for yourself? What legacy? My father did so much for people. If he's doing too much for people, he did too much for people. But what legacy did he build for himself? So you must pay attention to what you are trying to build for the future. Are there enemies? Yes, of course. Are there people that will do things to you? Yes, of course. Are there good people? Yes. Are there thieves? Yes. Evil? Yes. But what do you intend to build for the future? I see many young people fighting to make money, not to make life. You are not fighting to make life. All you are fighting for is to make money. So this is a wake-up call to a generation that is in the wrong side of history. We are in the wrong side of history. This is a playboy generation with unserious people being built. Go to a family. You meet six children on serious with their future. Spend more time with garbage than the truth of life. Social media platform. Waking up in the morning. The first thing you do is your phone. Loud music. Blocking both ears. Cyber crime in the increase. Fraud in a dimension. I am not building a future for my children to drive vehicles. That's not the reason why I came here. If it is vehicle and car, if it is vehicle, I think I've achieved that. If it is food, vehicle and house, I've achieved that. That's not why I'm here. No. If it is vehicle, food, and house, I have achieved that conveniently for them. Many want to walk before crawling. Write it down. Many are trying to walk before they crawl. They don't want to learn how to walk. But they want to run. You don't know how to walk. You want to run. You are not walking yet. You want to run. Some are not running, but they prefer to fly. Amazing generation on the wrong side of history. Whose mission is mainly to consume, not to produce. We are just willing to consume. Consume. Consume, you are never willing to produce anything. You ask a family that you meet, what's the dream here? They will tell you clearly make money, feed our children, they go to school, become graduate. What are you trying to produce? We are in the consuming part of history. One rich man in a family will die for the other people in the family. They will so suck you, you don't have money for yourself anymore. One rich man in a family will die for everybody. They will use demands and kill you. A man comes home with monies and a woman cannot ask him, where did you get these monies? Because all you are looking for is what to eat. A woman comes with a gift. And a man cannot ask the woman, how come you got this money? Character values are no more important in our community today anymore. It's playing against the parents, it's working against the children. 
No respect for nothing. Just make the money. That's all I want you to do. A consumption generation. A generation full of consumption. Young people pursuing programs without bearing. No bearing. People going to school studying courses they don't need. Running PhD without a purpose. Many just jump into school because they have to go to school. Why are you in school? That question is not going to be asked. I asked somebody already, why are you in school? I say because he has to go to school. I say that's why you're in school. Is there a dream that took you to school? Is there a vision why you went to become a lawyer? Why are you singing? Why? Why are you doing anything? Where do you see yourself in the future? Go to school, please take note. You should go to school, get married, get a job, and die. Write it in your book. This is the four things we do today. Go to school, get married, get a job, and then what next is remaining? You die. At least you have education. You get married to the one you love. You get a job for yourself. And then you die. Jesus didn't go to school. Jesus didn't get married. But it's the most useful name on the earth. Young lady, young man, sit down and appraise your life. Don't be deceived that you are married with children. Appraise your life. Don't be deceived that you are 60. Reappraise your intentions about life. No one has a place in destiny without a vision. If wishes we are hoaxes, beggars will rise. No man has a place in destiny without a vision. No one secures fulfillment in life without a run for your life. This is a wake up call over a sleeping giants on the earth today. Many giants are sleeping. Many youths are sleeping. Many youths are asleep. A young girl comes up in life and cleave a life to a man. An enterprising young lady who can be useful without a man carries her whole future and cleave on a man because she feels he has little money to spend. And then loses the steam of her own future. It's time we get smarter than what you do to ourselves. Because your generation is going to suffer more. What I have seen with my generation, we are not getting better than our fathers. We are worse now. Then the way this one is going, it will be worse than, permit me. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We hope you have been blessed by this message through God's servant, Dr. Maxwell Godin Igbe. Heaven's arms are wide open to welcome you no matter how far you've gone from Him. To make Jesus the Lord of your life, kindly say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and I repent of it and every one of my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my life even as I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare I am born again. I receive grace to live for you. In Jesus' name, Amen. You can join us in any of our services on Sundays. Our first service.
is by 6 a.m. Second service, 7.40 a.m. Third service, 9.20 a.m. Fourth service, 11 a.m. Fifth service, 12.10 p.m. Our winners in midweek services are as follows. First service, 4.15 p.m. Second service, 5.20 p.m. The Horner Christian Assembly is located along Ibuso or Sabah Expressway, just opposite the Stepdown Transformer at Sabah Delta State, Nigeria. You can as well follow us on all our social media platforms on Facebook at Horner Christian Assembly Worldwide, on Instagram at Home of Honor, on YouTube at HCA. TV. Please don't forget to share your testimonies with us by sending us an email at rehobartcite.hca at gmail.com or you can call the numbers displayed on your screen. <laughs>